So I've already counted down my favorite and least favorite country songs from the 2010s, but those videos were really popular and you guys had a lot of thoughts on what the best and worst country music of the 2010s is. So I thought maybe it would be fun to do the best and worst country of the last decade, according to you. I wanna get into your comments, see what you guys really thought were things that I might've left off my list. I had a lot of fun digging through all the comments on those and I'm excited to make this video. And I'm also excited that this is a sponsored video. Yes, Tecovas is sponsoring the channel once again. And guys, if you don't know Tecovas, you should, cause they make amazing boots and other apparel but amazing cowboy boots. What I really like about Tecovas is that they have this classic sense about them. They really care about the traditions of handmade cowboy boots. And when I've talked to people at the brand and they're mentioning the scalloped western top of the boot or the lemon wood peg arch of the shoe, I'm like, damn, y'all really care. And I love that. You can tell that they care, but they also make things really accessible. And if you're someone that's, you know, not a roper, go ahead, give the cowboys their clout but then, you know, dip your toe into Western wear as well. We've got designs that look really classic. They've got things that feel a little more experimental. You can choose different kinds of leather. You know, there's calfskin, there's ostrich, there's alligator, there's all sorts of stuff. So you go to their website, you can look at the boot designs and it's just super, super easy to navigate. So you can go ahead and check out my link. It is in the description. It's also gonna be in the pinned comment. So go check out Tecovas and get you a nice pair of cowboy boots. Oh, and in the last Tecovis video, some of you guys asked me what these were that went around the top of my boot. Just go to Amazon and look up boot bands. They're just like a little piece of elastic, stretchy thing, it goes around the top of the boot, and you can wear it with some slightly tighter jeans, which FYI, a lot of people in country music do. Now, the main piece of feedback I got from those two videos is that there are a lot of people that really feel the need to defend Joe Nichols' yeah. And I said yeah. I think what's happening here is a lot of people just love Joe Nichols, and I love Joe Nichols too, but I do not think Yeah is his best work. You know, give me Broken Heartsville, give me The Impossible, even give me Tequila Makes Her Clothes Fall Off, but just a song where we're saying Yeah over and over again, no, it felt too lazy. But I hear you, I know you love it, that and Stuck Like Glue. Sugar, sticky, sweet stuff, come on, give me that stuff. But otherwise, there was a bunch of feedback, and I wanna go first through the things that you said were the best, and then we'll do worst after that. So let's start with some of your recommendations of what you thought the best country music was that was left off this list. One of the biggest top comments was saying that Gary Allen was super, super underrated in the 2010s. And I'd agree. I think Gary Allen is generally really underrated. I mean, Chasing Airplanes, Songs About Rain, even Tough Little Boys, those are great songs and they remind me of when I first was becoming a real country fan. But in the 2010s, he's kind of had some trouble getting momentum and he had one big hit though, one huge hit. Every storm runs out of rain. Every storm runs, runs out of rain. The song has a kind of minor, sad vibe to it. And the arrangement on it's really cool. You get this kind of shaking tambourine, you get really crystal clear harmonies with him and a female voice, a lot of electric guitar. It just has a really, really cool vibe about it to me and a great build. And then Gary Allen's gravelly voice, I mean, it's always the best. It's always the best. It's pretty simply about how the bad times in life are going to pass. And so you've got this really hopeful attitude in the song that's set against that darker brooding vibe. You know, Gary Allen, if you know his story at all, if you know about his wife's suicide, he's been through some really tough stuff. And I feel like you feel that conviction on this album. And another song a couple later that I think was so underrated on that album called It Ain't The Whiskey. A ton of y'all mentioned Purgatory by Tyler Childers or just Tyler Childers in general. Purgatory is one of those records that just sort of has slow burned and continued to gain prestige and attention and listeners in the years that it's been out. It came out in 2017. Casual listeners of Tyler Childers will recognize the song Feathered Indians if they recognize anything on here. But more dedicated listeners will really gravitate to songs like White House Road and Lady May. Now I ain't the sharpest chisel that your hands have ever held. What makes Purgatory special is that it's got this rough around the edges vibe to it, a real lo-fi production style, a real mountain sound that is captured and showed that the outlaw movement might not be based all that far west. It might be right there in Appalachia. But yeah, as anyone that watches this channel knows, I love Purgatory. I love specifically on Feathered Indians when Tyler Childers says, I go running through the thick 
like it. So much that I put it on a shirt <laughs> that's in my shop, which is linked down below. So you can join the Thicket Gang if you would like. I also saw Brad Paisley in his song Southern Comfort Zone mentioned. Not everybody drives a truck. Not everybody drinks. I love that. I actually have a whole top 10 video of just Brad Paisley here on the channel and I mentioned Southern Comfort Zone and I really think his whole wheelhouse project is so underrated. This was an album that had way deeper themes than you might expect from a standard country album. It's not just dad jokes from Brad Paisley, although there are some of those, but he's wrestling with leaving his Southern comfort zone, with broadening his perspective and trying to balance how he really cares about where he's from and who he is, but he's also open to changing. You know, the storm cloud of accidental racist kind of tarnished that whole album, and I think they tried to turn the page really quick on it, but I think Southern Comfort Zone might have been a little more eloquent of a way of saying the same type of earnest things that Accidental Racist maybe was trying to say. But I love Brad Paisley. I think he is the most charming performer, the best live performer. He's awesome. You're right. Cody Johnson got a ton of mentions as well from y'all. I am a pretty recent Cody Johnson convert. You know, I know he's been big, 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 big in the Texas scene. And so I can't really speak to exactly what he was doing out there. But the guy can play the freaking Houston Rodeo. So I take that to mean he has steadily built a giant career where he can sell a lot of tickets out in Texas. And as a recent convert to TikTok, I do love seeing that his song Diamond in My Pocket from 2011 has become this sort of resurgent hit for him. And you're seeing it charting on iTunes now, like a decade later. And having listened to Cody Johnson's last album, Ain't Nothing To It, which there is a review of it on this channel, I get it. The guy's voice is amazing. He can belt, he can be a tough guy, it, it all just works. She Ain't In It by John Party was another one that a bunch of you guys called out. I love this song, and you guys know I love John Party. I really, he is probably the main artist that I have turned around on. I kinda had written him off when his first song, Up All Night, was a hit, but damn, California Sunrise really changed my mind and made me take a second look, and I was like, oh, we got this Bakersfield vibe getting brought into the contemporary country scene, and there's smart words in here, and I loved the charmingness of Head Over Boots and Heartache on the Dance Floor. That song just makes me giddy when I'm driving and that song comes on. It's got such good energy in it. But She Ain't In It was such a heart-wrenching, beautiful ballad. And it's sad, but it's beautiful. Just so you guys know, sometimes when I'm making lists, like, I go in my head, have I talked about this artist a lot on the channel recently? Are there other people that I could maybe showcase so I'm not just talking about the same five people over and over again? And that definitely is kind of the case with someone like John Party where I think people that watch this channel know that I love the guy. Last one that really stood out as a big recommendation for the best list was Meanwhile Back at Mama's by Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Yeah, this song's beautiful. This song's really beautiful and I certainly like it more than their other duet, the one where um, talk, to, talk to a girl, where it's like, you better respect your mama. I always thought that was such a weird line. Meanwhile, Back of Mamas is just a comfortable song. To me, it's a little bit of a checklist song, but it does evoke that feeling of nostalgia. And I think the fact that they're married kind of gives it this family element too that makes it work even better. I loved that whole era of Tim McGraw, as I said in that video with Shotgun Rider and Meanwhile, Back at Mamas and uh, diamond rings and old bar stools. He had a really, he had such a good cycle then. Much better than this kind of way down monstrosity that he recently released. And now let's talk about the worst. And it just started pouring rain appropriately for this worst section of the video. So if you hear that, it's just some nice ambiance. The main worst comment that just kept coming through was some iteration of, Dude, why didn't you talk about Luke Bryan or why didn't you bash bro country? And much like I just said with John Party, I just sort of felt like I had said that story on the channel before. But a lot of y'all said, man, you gotta have Luke Bryan on here as the worst. And yeah, there's some Luke Bryan songs that I think are truly terrible that came from the 2010s. And even though I really like some Luke Bryan songs like Drink a Beer and Fast and Roller Coaster, there are a bunch that I just find really cheesy and cringy and bad. And the two main ones that come to mind on that are Kick the Dust Up. Fill your cup up. That's what's up up which was just trying to recreate the success of That's My Kind of Night, but now with a sitar. And then the other one that really came to mind is my least favorite Luke Bryan song of the last decade was Move, which has the profoundly lazy bridge of him just spelling move. M-O-V-E, I love it, yeah, I love it when you get that thing. 
I don't know, I feel like we can do better than that. There is also a ton of mentions of Dustin Lynch's Good Girl. I freaking hate Good Girl. I cannot believe there is a major song that rhymes Good Girl with Good Girl. And then it even does that again. We get a third mention of Good Girl in that same chorus. This to me is like the defining snap track song. I feel like Dustin Lynch probably gets the most vitriol from me on this channel. To me, his music just feels so uninspired, so unembodied. I think I just don't generally believe him when he sings things. Alcohol You Later by Mitchell Tenpenny was one of the main comments. And I agree with that. That's on one of my worst lists. Alcohol, I don't like the breathy alcohol, vocal style yeah. of Mitchell Tenpenny. I hate how like smooth and snap trackified all of his music is. It feels skeezy and playerish and it just feels like kind of bad pop. Meant to Be by BB Rexa and Florida Georgia Line got a lot of comments. This song's definitely an earworm, but I was kind of surprised that it caught on in the way that it did because the chorus just saying if it's meant to be be, it'll be it'll be in the context of a relationship like there's no stakes kind of built into that in fact it's saying that there aren't really stakes because if this relationship is supposed to be there it'll be there so let's just ride together it's kind of missing the conflict and plot that sort of drive a lot of relationship songs like the fall for you moment or the we're breaking up moment it's just kind of neither of those which i suppose is interesting but the reality of this song is it was a pop song it was even said we're not going to release this to country radio and then it ended up becoming through some stupid chart rules biggest country hit of all time because it was number one on the hot country songs chart for 51 weeks and it was definitely a huge hit but will it be remembered as a country classic I don't know. I highly doubt that. And it's kind of weird that this is now the record holder. Like a pop star. A pop star song is now the record holder on the country chart. And the last one I want to talk about that came up a lot was Drunk Girl by Chris Jansen, which a lot of y'all say you hate. Now, I think when people dislike this song, they dislike it for the same reason that I dislike Keith Urban's Female. I said that that song was pandering and virtue signaling, and I think a lot of people feel like Chris Jansen is maybe doing the same thing on take a drunk girl home, don't hook up with her. Like, he's trying to invite kudos for himself and pat himself on the back and say, give me credit for being such a good guy. And some people find that manipulative or self-aggrandizing. I've never gotten that vibe from the song, and I am not a big Chris Jansen fan, if you recall my worst of 2019 video. But but Drunk Girl has always come across to me as a pretty respectful song. And maybe it's because I'm a guy and this is a song that is talking to guys that I'm like not so put off by the message. It's important to consider kind of your own context and biases and stuff. But I definitely see the point of people that say this song is annoying and like you're really gonna brag about doing the right thing, about not sleeping with a girl that's so drunk that she wouldn't remember it. And I can also see the point and probably I've aired on this side of the people that think like that's a nice sentiment, you know? Should this be a question that we're asking? You know, in an ideal world, no, but is it a question that we're asking and is he trying to say something in that debate of substance? Yeah. So I don't hate it in the same way that a lot of people do, but this is a video about your opinions and this was one that a lot of people said. So those were a lot of your guys' most popular responses that came in on those videos. If you wanna check them out, they are linked down below, as is Tacovas. Go and check them out. Thanks again for sponsoring the video. And now I really do promise I am turning the page, closing the book on the 2010s. I feel like that is enough review. You guys have an awesome day. Stay safe out there.